Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at five hidden gems in Adobe InDesign CC. So let's take a look. The first hidden gem is actually a bonus one. We're going to pop over to Adobe Bridge where I've got the images that I want to bring in. And I've got four images selected in Bridge. That's not the, that's not the hidden gem. Uh, but I do want to point out something before we head back to InDesign is that um, I've also taken the liberty that on each one of these images, I've gone into Bridge's metadata panel and I have given each image a headline, like a title and a description. So if you click on each one, or if I click on each one, you'll see that each one has a headline and a description, and that will come up a little bit later in, an, in a hidden gem that's coming in this video. But let's do the first bonus one. We're gonna select all four images, and the bonus hidden gem is that in Bridge, you've got the ability to just go up to the file menu and choose place, and it knows that you have InDesign installed. So when I do that, it will take those four images, take me right back to InDesign, and allow me to place them. So that's the bonus hidden gem um, that's not even one of the top five, so or not even one of the five today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. The first hidden gem is that we can, you know, of course, place these images one by one, but we're going to use the grid effect. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and simply start in the upper left-hand corner of this um, page, and we're just going to drag out. Now, if I were to let go right now, it would place the first image. But your hidden gem is that on your keyboard, if you've got two or more images selected, and you press the right arrow key, you've now divided that frame into uh, two frames. And if I hit the right arrow key again, it'll be three frames. And if I hit it again, it'll be four. If I go back on the left arrow key, I'm taking it back down to two. Same thing on the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. If I press the up arrow key, I've now taken that one frame and divided it into four. And if you remember, I have four images selected. So now if I let go, all four images get placed perfectly. So that is the first hidden gem is that you can bring in multiple images and using the grid, um, using your arrow keys to divide it into multiple frames, you get the ability to do that. Now, again, another bonus hidden gem is I want to give myself a little bit more space in between these. So I'm going to use the gap tool. And as I hover between the gaps, it automatically detects the gaps and allows me to shift the gap. So basically resizing the frame, or if I, again, here's the hidden gem. If I hold down my command key on the Mac or my control key on Windows, I can expand that area. In other words, I wanna give myself a little bit more room between those frames. So that was a kind of another bonus hidden gem, but the grid was the hidden gem. And now we're going to go to the next hidden gem, hidden gem number two. And that is, remember those descriptions that I typed in in the metadata panel inside Bridge? Well, now I wanna use them. And this is a two-part thing to get this set up. So the first part is I'm gonna go up to my object menu, I'm gonna come down to captions, and I'm gonna to go to caption setup. So first part is you have to set it up. And what you're doing is you're telling it what to put in for the metadata caption, and normally it will be on the very top thing, it'll be on name. But I'm going to say use the description, which I have keyed in to the, each one of these images. And I want to bring in that description below the image by this much space. You know, I can, of course, increase it if I want. And if I had a particular paragraph style that I wanted that description to come in, I can go ahead and choose that now. And when I click OK, nothing happens. That's because I, I told you it was two parts. The first part is to set it up. The second part is to actually invoke it. Now that it's been set up for this document, I'm gonna go ahead and select these images. So using my selection tool, holding down my shift key, oops, selection tool, shift key, select each one. And now that I've got all four images selected, I'm gonna go up to my object menu, come back, come back down to captions and say generate live caption. So that's your second hidden gem is that you can generate live captions based on the metadata from your images that you either put in with Adobe Bridge or you know with Photoshop or with uh, Lightroom or however you put your descriptions, titles, whatever other metadata you wanna bring in. So, and as you saw from that setup menu, we can put in more than one. So I could have put in the title and the description. I could even bring in camera data if I wanted to, to uh, let the person know 
what camera shot this, what lens I use, so forth and so on. But that's just a, a second hidden gem is using the metadata captions uh, in InDesign, grabbing that data that's already inside the image. Okay, so hidden gem number two. Let's head over to another document. <clears throat> and in this document, I'm going to use an InDesign CC feature that allows me to generate a QR code. Now that's, again, that's an InDesign CC feature. It's not really that hidden. We've talked about it before. I've shown it before. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, go to generate QR code under the object menu. And I've already got a URL in there to my website, terrywhite.com. And of course, we can do plain text, text message, email, business card, but we're going to use web hyperlink. Next thing I'm going to do is set the color. I want the color of this to be white so that it shows up on the green background. And basically, I'm just going to use the paper color for that. And now all I have to do is click OK, and there's my QR code. But here's the hidden gem. That is a vector object. It's scalable, and more importantly, it's copyable and pasteable, if that's a word, in other applications. So if I don't want to use this in InDesign, let's say I want to use InDesign to create the QR code, but now I want to put it inside my Illustrator illustration or my Photoshop document, all I have to do is edit, copy. We'll head over to Adobe Illustrator. <clears throat> in Illustrator, we'll go ahead and paste it. And there it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command G to group it so that it's grouped as one object and I can go ahead and pick it up. I can go ahead and scale it because it is vector. And if we take a closer look at it, and we'll zoom in on it, and I use my direct selection tool, you can see that this is basically individual vector. So this is mathematical lines and curves. That's what makes it so you can scale it to any degree you want. We can rotate it, we can change the color of it, we can do anything we would wanna do here in Illustrator because those are vector pieces. So QR codes generated in InDesign don't have to stay in InDesign. Your hidden gem is that you can copy them and paste them as vector elements in any other application that can accept vector elements. Okay, so let's head over to hidden gem number four. Let's head back to InDesign. And our next hidden gem, we're gonna head back to that blank document we started on. We're gonna grab the type tool and we're just gonna go ahead and drag out a nice big text frame. And we're gonna uh, type the word design. If I can spell that properly, there we go. And we're gonna select that word. And of course we can just use our pop-up menu to change the font size, make it nice and big so we can see it. Um, just a bonus hidden gem, we can use the command shift or PC control shift and the greater than key, which is right above your period, and we can just visually make it bigger. But the hidden gem here is the new font menu. Now, if I wanna change this font to something else, I can go ahead and just, of course, pop up the font menu and get to any font that I want. But what I wanna point out here are two things that are kinda of hidden, or uh, one of them's hidden, one of them's pretty clear. You can add menus or add fonts from Typekit, which this will me, take me over to the Typekit website, let me pick out a font and add it to the menu, but here's the hidden gem. Over here on the left-hand side, there's a filter button. So when I click the filter button, that will filter my font menu to just the Typekit fonts, just the ones I've added from Typekit so I can quickly get to them and quickly use them. Uh, so that's the hidden part is that, yeah, you can go ahead and add Typekit fonts directly in InDesign now, but a lot of people don't realize that that button over there on the left-hand side is actually a filter that lets you filter them down and get to the ones that you've added more quickly. All right, so we're going to um, come back to this in the bonus tip for the application or for, our, uh, for my Creative Cloud app, but let's go back to our uh, fifth hidden gem. We're going to go to this document where I've got a footnote, and if we look at... Jo uh, Jo Joanna rolls out of the tent at first light to put the water on for coffee, and then there's a number one there representing the footnote. And InDesign's had footnotes for years. So if we scroll down, we can see at the bottom of this column, that's the actual footnote. But what's new and what's a hidden gem inside of InDesign CC is that we can now use those footnotes in our EPUB documents, in our eBooks, and we can make it a pop-up. So uh, all I'd have to do is add my footnotes wherever I want them to be. Then when I go up to do my export to EPUB, and here we'll do it out on the desktop, I get a menu option that allows me to choose that my footnotes 
are in a pop-up for EPUB 3 standard. So what does that mean? It means that once I've exported this out and distributed it, or distributed it as a EPUB, either um, on the iBook store or Amazon or whatever, however I distribute it, or just email it out or put it on my website or whatever it is, I can then uh, have people open up that EPUB in their favorite EBook reader. And now, for example, I'm in iBooks on the desktop here. And if I just click on that footnote, it does the pop-up. So the person doesn't have to have the document scroll around and find the footnote. It just pops up right in place. They read the footnote, click away or tap away, and away they go. So those are five hidden gems with a few bonus ones thrown in about InDesign CC. Hope you learned something new, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again for watching.